Afternoon Church. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarita, for reading the scripture. Mm, and uh, thank you, Selena, for that wonderful uh, word that you have shared. Um, it was really encouraging and a very meaningful uh, study. Well, uh, <coughs> um, the uh, scripture portion that has been read to us all by Sarita is taken from uh, Judges uh, chapter 4. We come across the story of Deborah uh, in these uh, chapters in the book of Judges. We find her story in chapter 4 and uh, in chapter 5 we read uh, a poem that was written uh, probably by Deborah because it is called as the Song of Deborah. Uh, it is a victory poem. So when I was uh, uh, thinking the, what to share on this day, since it's a woman's day and I thought uh, let's concentrate on uh, the lives of some women that we come across in the Bible. So often we talk about, uh, there are some very famous uh, women uh, from the Bible like Sarah, Mary or uh, you know Mary the Magdalene or uh, uh, Leah or Ruth and Rebecca. I, I thought Deborah is one woman, I think not many of us are uh, very well versed with her story. So. Uh, God laid this on my heart for some reason that I should read about her and um, and I surely felt that uh, God's intention through this exercise that he placed on my heart is uh, basically for me because there are some questions that I am battling with and um, I could see God's uh, God speaking to me through the story of Deborah and I'm sure God is going to speak to all of us, all of us women who are present here as well as men who are uh, with us this morning here. So I titled uh, this um, sharing as Deborah Embracing God's Call. Um, quite often uh, we are very scared of certain uh, questions that we have been asked in our lives. Uh, maybe uh, if somebody asks you, um, you know, um, what is your role in, or what is your walk with God in your Christian life? Or what is God calling you to do? Or sometimes um, it might be simple tasks that we are asked to do in the church or in the service of the Lord. Often we say, well, I'm not qualified. Well, I, I am scared. I am terrified. I don't have time. I'm not good enough to do that. These are the things we often come up with, including myself. I try to push. Uh, Pastor Praveen tells me, Joshila, you, you are scheduled for speaking. Then I say, well, you have given me three times this uh, quarter. Why don't you make it two times? Or I, I'll tell, I'll, you scheduled me four times this quarter. Why don't you do it uh, three times? Uh, I don't want, because I am busy. All these things come up. Well, uh, Deborah's life uh, teaches me and us that all of us have some excuses, but are we embracing God's call? So let us look at Deborah's life story and see what lessons we can glean from her life. Well, as I said, we come across this very beautiful character uh, of Deborah in the chapter 4 of the book of Judges, as I've told. And here we are introduced to this lady uh, who is a prophetess. Uh, this was the pre-monarch time for the nation of Israel when God didn't ordain any king as yet for the, uh, for the, uh, no, the Israelites and this was the time when they have been uh, guided and ruled basically guided and ruled uh, by uh, judges so Deborah was uh, one of the 12 judges who uh, presided over the common uh, you know issues that Israelites 
faced and she was the one who was guiding and judging them, uh, kind of basically an administrator work she was doing. Right, she was, all, she was not just a, a judge, but she was also a prophetess. Prophetess in the sense you know that they prophesy, right? So how did she do that? Uh, the book also tells that God speaks uh, to Deborah. So uh, Deborah heard what God wanted his people to do, and she conveyed this, that message to uh, the uh, nation of Israel. So Deborah, uh, out of the many um, uh, things and many titles she has, which we will see a little later, uh, she was a prophetess and as well as a judge. Now, the literal meaning uh, of the uh, no, name Deborah is bee. In the language of Hebrew, uh, it means a bee. Uh, you know, bees are always busy working, making honey and, you know, all those things. They are pursuers. They constantly uh, have a focus and they try to achieve their targets. So possibly Deborah was also a person who was focused and was always busy in the work that God has called her to do. And in other translation, Deborah also means to speak. Possibly again, the kind of work that she did also gave her that name because she used to speak, solve, and resolve problems and conflicts in, the, uh, in that land of Israel. Now, in this same chapter, Deborah also is described as the wife of Lapidoth, or in some translations, it is said as the woman of Lapidoth. Uh, again, uh, in Hebrew, it is called as Eshet Lapidot, which means the woman of torches. So possibly again, Deborah got this name because of the nature that she had. She was a very dynamic lady, always on the move, always you know, fiercely acting to bring justice and uh, you know, uh, maintain peace and harmony in the land that she was living in. So obviously, Deborah was a woman who was very busy with great wisdom. Now, um, uh, she was also called, another character of Deborah is that she was also called as the mother of Israel. Again, this uh, uh, description of Deborah comes to us in chapter 5, where Deborah is described as the mother, basically referring to the caring and protective nature that she has had. Uh, we don't uh, hear whether she was really married or not, uh, whether she had children or not, but she was also given the title as mother. Basically, Deborah was a judge, a prophetess, a caring and protective woman, and she was a worshipping warrior. Out of everything that stood out from the characteristics of Deborah, this particular character, uh, characteristic that she had really attracted me. She was a warrior and a military strategist. Now, uh, in the same chapter that uh, Sarita has read to us, uh, it describes how the nation of Israel was, I'm sorry, the nation of Israel was subdued by a, a pagan king, a Canaanite king named um, Jabin, right? So Israel, the nation of Israel was sinning against the Lord and Lord was not very happy with it. So he gave upper hand to this Canaanite king Jabin to take control over the nation of the Israel. So this was the time when Deborah also was acting and playing the role of a judge in that nation, right? So uh, during that time, Israelites were under the rule of Jabin and they were really oppressed and they were not happy uh, the way they were treated. So they cried out to the Lord. And during this time, Deborah hears the word from the Lord asking him to go against the army of Jabin. 
So Deborah calls for the commander of her army, the Israelite army, who was Barak at that time. So Barak was second in command, command second commander after Deborah. Uh, possibly like Deborah, maybe like uh, the president, we can compare her to the president, and Barak was the commander of the armies. So she called for Barak, and then she tells him that the Lord has given her instruction to go against this uh, king, Jebin, and fight against his armies, and fight against the, the commander of the enemies, uh, who is Sisera. Right? So... <clears throat> Barak, being uh, the commander, obviously, he should have taken the instruction and gone ahead to fight. But there, there comes the twist here. Barak says uh, to Deborah that I will go only if you go with me. I really don't, uh, it is really confusing why a commander, a soldier, a commander asks a woman to be uh, accompanying him to the war field. Right? Normally women don't uh, go to the war fields. But here, uh, Barak asks Deborah to accompany him, to go with him, possibly because uh, maybe uh, uh, Barak has found Deborah to be gallant and, you know, really uh, very good. Um, or maybe because God, he wanted uh, God's presence through Deborah to accompany him into the war field. Whatever is the reason, we ne really never know, but um, uh, Deborah uh, accepts that and goes to the war field along with Barak, but with a condition. There, she says that, I am willing to come with you, but she prophesizes that the victory that God is going to give to the Israelites is not because of man, the commander, Barak, but because of a woman. And the woman is not Deborah here. The woman who is really going to bring the ultimate victory is another lady whom we will see a little later. So they all go uh, into the war field. Uh, we, uh, we read that uh, the Jabin's army is a very mighty army. They have 900 uh, chariots and obviously they must have had a huge army on foot. Uh, so they, that's a very powerful army. And then uh, Barak goes to the war with his 10,000 men along with Deborah. Now, be, uh, as I have mentioned, Deborah is a military strategist. Uh, it is uh, beautifully, we can see in verse 11 and 12 how they make a plan, a strategy to subdue the enemy. So uh, there is another family, uh, the family of uh, Hobab, who is a descendant of Moses' relatives. So they are camping in a particular place where the actual war has to happen, nearby the uh, war field area. So. Deborah and Barak, they make a strategy. They discuss this strategy with the, uh, Hobab's family. And uh, <clears throat> they will ask the Hobab's family. Hobab and uh, his wife, is, uh, name is Jali, Jail. So they make a strategy and they see that the news about a uh, war that is going to happen goes to the enemy camp. So. This family of Hobab and Jail, they, uh, they take the word. They are actually allies of the king, but the enemy king, but they take the word that the Israelites are uh, you know, readying themselves to wage a war against that particular uh, country. So uh, that was the strategy that uh, you know, Barak and uh, <coughs> Deborah actually placed to see that the news reaches the enemy camp. Finally, they wage the war and uh, the enemy uh, enemies are def uh, defeated. Uh, all of them are killed. The Bible says that not one has escaped. But out of all the uh, army, the 900 chariots and the huge army that uh, uh, the enemy king had, uh, the commander-in-chief, Sisera, escapes the uh, attack. And he runs away to the nearby uh, camp where this uh, Jail is actually living. Now comes the lady whom uh, Deborah has prophesied that the victory, the ultimate victory over the enemy will be uh, through the hands of a woman. 
So this uh, Sisera, uh, realizing that his army is defeated, he goes running uh, to the, his friend's uh, camp. And uh, Jail, the woman of that uh, household, she receives him and uh, offers him hospitality. And she uh, actually covers him up and sees that he is protected. That was again a, um, uh, what do you say? It's a trap that was laid by uh, Deborah and uh, Barak. So he lands into the trap. He goes to the tent of Jail where he will be given hosp uh, hospitality. He is given food, uh, drink to you know, uh, gain strength, and he relaxes there and falls asleep. At that time, Jail, a lady, she takes charge over the entire area. She kills Sisera by driving a tent peg through his skull. So on that day, as prophesied by Deborah, Lord has given the army of his, uh, the enemies of Israelites into the hands of two brave women. And the victory was won. Right? So this is the story how God worked through a woman uh, and uh, women basically worked through lives of two women bringing about the victory in the lives of or in the history of uh, Israel. So what can we learn from the life of this judge Deborah? Deborah's life teaches us to be courageous, right? Many times, as I have already shared, all of uh, some of us, or maybe every each one of us, are limited by the shortcomings or the fears that we have in our lives. Judge Deborah's story is from an era, from the time uh, where women were not treated uh, with great dignity. In those times, in times of Deborah, women had only three social statuses. A woman was either a virgin, an unmarried girl living in the father's household, waiting to be married and given away, or she was a wife who was being nurtured and protected and uh, you know, uh, looked after by her husband, who is a provider and protector. Or she was a widow, who was again at the mercy of the uh, social, um, mercy of the society in which she was living. Uh, they were taken care by either the temple or the heads of the society, or she was given away in marriage to another man. Right? She was at the mercy of the society in she, which she was living. Deborah comes from such times, but yet she has risen above the social statuses and social clutches. She was a brave woman who stood up and she accepted the calling of God. She was a courageous woman. So, what are we waiting for? We are really in a much more better situation uh, in today's age because all of us are independent, we are working, we are confident, and yet we have excuses to accept God's calling. Let us remember that God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the called. So if we are willing to come into his presence and accept his calling, definitely God is going to qualify us for his calling. Like Deborah, let us be obedient. Whatever God is asking us to do today, let us not be terrified. If God is calling us or telling us to go somewhere, let us go to his, according to his commands. Deborah was a prophetess she was a judge, and it involved a lot of listening before speaking. She not only listened to the people who came to her, but she also took time to listen to what God is telling her. Like Deborah, let us encourage each other. Deborah, being so much in command, with so much of you know, abilities, she gave the due credit to the woman who actually helped the, Israel, the nation of Israel to win war. She records in a poem 
how Jail, a woman, ultimately uh, put the war to an end by killing the commander. She gave the due credit. Like her, let us encourage each other. All of us are made differently. All of us have weaknesses. Some of us are strong and most of us are weak. But let us recognize each other's strength, strengths and help overcome the weaknesses of our fellow sisters and also brothers. The story of Deborah in Bible shows us that Lord calls ordinary people like you and me to do extraordinary things. And this we can accomplish only by the spirit of the Lord. And when we are filled with his spirit, we will be able to achieve everything God wants us to do in our lives. We are weak, but he is strong. And let us remember that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So brethren, if Deborah is called, and so are we, let us accept his calling. May God bless our hearing. <laughs>